All right, so today we are going to talk about apostrophes, which are these little things here. We are also going to talk about um, its versus its and whose versus whose. These are all things you will see on the ACT. So apostrophes can be used in contractions, and that's just when we take two or more words and we shorten them down. We see these all the time in kind of informal writing. However, what we are really focusing on today is using apostrophes when we are showing possession or ownership. For example, if I say that woman's shirt is bright red, the shirt belongs to the woman. If I say the dog ran over the cat's tail, the tail belongs to the cat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are just more examples here. Now, every year that I teach this, I suddenly have students who start using an apostrophe every time they see an S at the end of a sentence. Please do not do that. Oftentimes, an S at the end of a sentence is just pluralizing the word. So I have, there's more than one boy, I'm just going to put an S. There's more than one flower, I just put an S. So those rules don't change. However, when I'm talking about a bike that belonged to a boy being stolen or petals that belong to a flower falling off, that is when I want to use my possessive apostrophe because the word that comes after this word belongs to this word. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we've been talking so far about singular possessives. Examples are here. Now, what happens if we have a plural possessive, which means that um, we have essentially a word that ends in an S, and we also have something that belongs to that word. So the three witches' brooms, or my parents' anniversary, my English 11 students' grades, I'm just going to add that apostrophe here. I still have the possession, the grades belong to the students, the anniversary is my parents, the brooms belong to the witches, etc. But I just need that apostrophe afterward. We also have some irregular nouns that when they are pluralized, they don't end in S. So what to do with that? <clears throat> We're just going to add the apostrophe S as we do with the singular possessive. So things like children, women, men, there are many other examples. We'll just do the apostrophe S and here are your rules kind of summarized there. All right, next up. <clears throat> it's with an apostrophe can only mean it is or it has. Examples. It's a beautiful day. So that could be it is a beautiful day. I know it's been a tough year for you. I know it has been a tough year for you. I wonder if it's going to snow later. I wonder if it is going to snow later. This form is the possessive form of it. So it does not have an apostrophe. The dog chases its tail, the tail that belongs to it. The store celebrated its 10th anniversary, the 10th anniversary that belongs to it, etc. Sometimes on the ACT, this is given an, as an option, and I just want to point out it is never, ever, ever a thing. That's not a thing. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Same thing here, just different word. Whose with an apostrophe can only mean who is or who has. The teacher should be the only one who is talking. Whose is the possessive form? Whose sandwich is this? In other words, who? To whom does the sandwich belong? Um, I want to, I guess, just say in order to kind of check yourself with these last two things, the it's and the who's, if you see a word, replace it with who is or who has. If it works, then you're correct. If it doesn't work, then you need to use the other form of who's. So I read this. He wants to know who has been leaving him love letters. Perfect. Works. I'll use that. Um, these are also, for example, the, this it's and this who's are examples of using um, apostrophes in contractions because they are shortened versions of words. So just keep that in mind. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks.